Chapter 26, Joel Weber. My black eye doesn't hurt anymore, although I look like I lost a game of chicken with an Amtrak train. Appearance-wise, the healing process might be worse than the bruise itself. It's when the swelling starts to go down that the new colors spread out amid the black and blue. Purples, greens, yellows. Every time I catch my reflection, there's a whole different palette in the mo piece of modern art on my face. I saw a little bit of orange yesterday. I'm the only one in my family who finds the changing colors around my eye socket so intriguing. In a weird way, it's easier on me. If I'm sick of looking at myself, all I have to do is stay away from mirrors. My parents don't have that option. When they see my black eye, in any of its stages of evolution, they're stricken with guilt. Maybe it was the wrong decision to bring you home, my father reflects sadly. Of course it wasn't, I tried to assure them. I hated Melton. But aren't you afraid that? My mother lets out a short, wheezing sob in C-sharp. It might be starting up again. Afraid? Sure I am. When Chase, Aaron, and Bear were all over me last year, it was painful, humiliating, and downright scary. If you can't even ride your bike without a lacrosse stick sailing out of nowhere and sending you flying, life becomes impossible. You know it's not your fault. You know those guys are idiots. And yet, you can't help thinking you somehow deserve it. That you might be just a teeny bit less worthy than everybody else. After all, how come no one is picking on any of them? But as worried as I am about all of that, I think what bothers me the most is how wrong I was about Chase. I honestly believed he changed. I was even starting to like the guy. It goes to show how mistaken a person can be. My parents' reaction is bad enough. My sister's is off the chain. Every change in the bruised topography of my face launches her into a new revenge fantasy about what she would do to Chase if I were in charge of the world. Some of these are so brutal and in some cases so downright gross that I have to cut her off. Come on, Shosh, I exclaimed as the two of us head for Brendan's house on Sunday morning. Listen to yourself like you'd ever put another human being through a wood chipper. I never said another human being, she replies evenly. I said alpha rat. And if you were paying attention, I said I'd feed him in feet first. That way he gets to watch while his whole lower body... Enough, I interrupt. You wouldn't do that. Nobody would do that. The Spanish Inquisition didn't do that. Only because the wood chipper hadn't been invented yet, she tells me sullenly. Anyway, I sigh. I'm anxious to change the subject. I wonder what Brendan wants. What do you think? She snarls, still in a bad mood. He has another stupid idea for a YouTube video and we're the cast and crew. The tech said that's not it, I remind her. It better not be, otherwise Brendan's going to be in the wood chipper. That's my sister. No problems ever so small that she can't overreact to it. We start up the Espinosa's front walk and come face to face with Kimberly. Oh, hi, guys. She gives me a long, hard look. Your eye is better, she adds dubiously. I'm okay, I say quickly. I don't want Shosh to nominate any more candidates for the wood chipper. You also got the text, my sister asks Kimberly. She nods, and Chase is coming too. What? Chase? Shosh grabs my arm and starts dragging me back down the walk. Brendan explodes at the front door and runs up to us. Where are you going? Chase Ambrose isn't coming anywhere near me or my brother, Shosh seeds. That's why I invited you. Chase is innocent. She keeps pulling me along. Well, not totally innocent, Brendan pleads, but he didn't hit Joel on purpose. He was just as blindsided as we were. I've got proof. What proof? I ask. One man banned, he exclaims. The video survived, and it proves that Chase was trying to stop Aaron and Bear. We're going home, Shosh insists. You go home, I tell her. I'm staying. Here, she demands, with that guy coming over? This time, I don't let her push me around. I want to know what happened. I have to see it for myself. And she stays, too, probably because she thinks I need protection. A lot of guys would be embarrassed about that, but I'm at least a little bit grateful. At any minute, Chase is going to walk in Brendan's front door, and I can't predict how I'm going to feel about it. I've seen him around school here and there. Still, this will be the first time since the fire extinguisher incident that we'll be in the same room together. We establish ourselves on the living room couch and Brendan sets up his computer on the coffee table. I transferred this from one of the flip cans, he explains. I brought it home to shoot something else and this was on it. He puts out some snacks and we settle in to wait for Chase. 20 minutes go by, then we're up to half an hour. Kimberly is impatient, mostly because Chase is the only reason she's here. Where is he? Brendan texts again, no answer. Well, what did you expect? Shosh scoffs. He said he was coming, Brendan insists. He cares about as much about you as he cares about everyone else except himself. Zero. Face it, he blew you off. My sister stands up. Let's go, Joel. We've already wasted enough of our lives, courtesy of Chase Ambrose. I turn to Brendan. Play the video. Chase can see it some other time. We fast forward through most of it, watching musician Brendan popping up all around the risers, playing different instruments for his one-man band. He switches into regular playback once the tuba sequence comes up. I feel my stomach muscles tense. As much as I've been bullied, I never had the opportunity to actually watch it happen before. The impatient expression on Shosh's face is replaced by one of intense concentration. I don't get it, Kimberly puts in. All I see is Brendan. Where's everybody else? You and Joel are there, but you're both out of frame, Brendan explains. Keep watching. 
We hear Aaron and Bear fling the doors open, even though they're off camera. The first thing we actually see are the two jets of white foam that catch Brendan full in the face. He goes down, two men all. It would be funny if I didn't know what was coming next. When the streams of foam change direction to some target off screen to the right, I know I'm the one in the line of fire. There's a lot of yelling going on, and I hear my own voice in there with Brendan, Kimberly, and the two attackers. After a few more blasts of foam, Aaron and Bear step into the frame, appearing on the right left side of the screen. The next part I remember all too well. Aaron and Bear are tossing instruments all over the place and trashing the band room. I try to take on Aaron, but he shoves me down into the foam. It's hard to watch, but not as hard as I thought it would be. That's not who I am, I tell myself. It's just something that happened to me. Somehow, seeing it unfold in real time, in high-definition video, I'm able to expand the fracas in the band room to include every rotten, bullying thing that was ever done to me. And here I am, alive, undamaged, well, except my eye. I've been victimized, but I don't have to let that define me as a victim. I'm back, back at home, and back to myself. That's when Chase makes his appearance on the computer screen. He seems totally stunned by what he finds, even when Bear thrusts the fire extinguisher into his arms. I sit forward eagerly because that's my fire extinguisher, the one that's about to bash me in the eye. As I watch Chase and Bear struggling over the tiny metal cylinder, I tense, knowing it's coming any second. I'm following the combatants, checking for the high sign, the nod of acknowledgement that shows that the three are in cahoots, and it's time to clobber the kid who got them put on community service. It doesn't come. Chase wins the tug of war and my face gets in the way. That's all that happens. Brendan pauses the video. An accident, he says triumphantly. I agree, I tell him. Wow. Chase must really be strong, is what Kimberly gets out of it. Shosh's cheeks are bright red as she digests the truth. My sister judges everything and anybody so harshly that when her judgment falls on herself, it's like the end of the world. He's still alive, she said tight-lipped. He's not perfect, Brendan agrees, but I think of the trouble he would have been facing if he'd gotten blamed for all that. If it was you and you saw an easy way out, wouldn't you take it? Shosh is stubborn. I wouldn't be in a mess like that because I don't hang around with pond scum. I look at her. We have to at least talk to him. I'm expecting more of an argument, but she nods, and I can think of plenty of things to say. One of those things should be I'm sorry, Brendan puts in pointedly. She glares at him. We'll see, but if it is, it'll be the last item on my list. Where is Chase? Kimberly asks in annoyance. Brendan, you said he was going to be here. Brendan is already on his phone talking with Mrs. Ambrose. He frowns, thanks her, and hangs up. According to his mom, he's on his way to Portland Street. She said he was in a, hur a hurry. Did he forget to come, I ask? Brendan shakes his head. He said he'd be here. He just texted a couple hours ago. Shosh stands up. Let's go over to Portland Street. 